mine too. Welcome everyone. Yeah, we're going to start, but you can come on up and sit down. It's not a problem. Sorry. Just wanted to say for anyone who um, hasn't been here before, we do these on a monthly basis. These are always uh, sessions that are given by our clients for our clients and they're done for free. So that's really nice so that all of us can get some extra skills and things um, in helping us to run our businesses. Not only are we having it in this room where Kevin is our live presenter, but it's at all of the other four locations as well. They're going in remotely as a Google Hangout. And so um, we can take questions from any of the uh, conference room locations where our uh, colleagues in the other centers are having pizza with us as well. Just a couple of reminders because here it is, the end of October, and we're going to uh, hit the last couple months of this year really hard. I was telling some of the people in the room that we have just had a crazy October just totally crazy and this week we're going to have one of our biggest virtual office we've signed more members this week than i think any week that we have in the history of office centers when you get your newsletter on monday i want you to look because i think we have like 30 new members between the full-time clients and the virtuals which is just a huge highlight and everyone tomorrow i want you to come in because we are giving anyone who plays blackjack with us tomorrow a guaranteed 100 grand. I know that you're not going to believe this, but there is no trick to this. Everybody's going to get 100 grand when they play blackjack. And we do have a budget. We will only be giving out $200 billion tomorrow. So anyone who wants to play, get in early, and we are guaranteeing that everyone will win 100 grand when they can play blackjack tomorrow. Okay? So come on in and do that with us. Um, today's speaker is Kevin Ellinger. Um, I'm really excited because we work with Kevin and have seen such an influx in business and he's helped us with social media. He's done all of the cool Office Center videos that you see. The one last month, I mean, honestly blew me away. It was so great. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kevin. He's a creative marketing specialist. I call him a creative marketing genius. And throughout his career, he's earned numerous national awards for his work as a creative director developed a nationally syndicated radio program, founded an international catalog company, I didn't know about that, and taught marketing and creative innovation techniques to hundreds of students and executives. I know he's taught a lot of people a lot of things in our community because you're just such a giving person and always are ready to give people advice um, in, in uh, the marketing field. Since founding Think Creative Digital Marketing in 2001, Kevin has been working directly with a highly diverse clientele from large corporations like Honeywell, Bueller, Medica, to entrepreneurial startups, creative marketing strategies appeal to target audiences, drive revenue, and achieve tangible results. I don't see virtual office centers on here, because I know you've done a whole lot of things for us. Yeah, we, Next time, come on. Put us on here. here he is, Kevin Ellinger. <laughs> Thanks. I couldn't have said it better had I wrote it myself. <laughs> Again, I'm Kevin Ellinger. I'm a marketing and innovation strategist with over 30 years of uh, experience in the industry. Again, as uh, Laurie had mentioned, like I've worked with a lot of different corporations, from large corporations, and I was sitting down the other day and I was thinking, actually, I probably worked with over a thousand small to mid-sized businesses also. So again, I've had a lot of time, and we've worked in a lot of cross-diverse, so it's not just one industry, it's in a lot of them. Everything from healthcare and financial to uh, manufacturing and industries. So again, we've had a lot of uh, experience in the, in the industry. Um, so as a person who works with a lot of sales and marketing teams, you know, one of the things I've really been disappointed in is just how little executives really know about what it takes to really generate revenue. You know, a lot of times, sometimes they'll just hire a new salesperson, give them a bunch of business cards, then have them go out and sell, sell, sell. Or maybe they'll try to do them in-house. So for instance, I had a client who had uh, done a direct mailer. They came to us like 30 days afterwards. They had done a direct mailer on their own because they found out that direct mail actually gets a 3% return. So they did 20,000. They figured, oh, we'll get like 600 responses. So how would you like to have 600 new clients? That yeah, would be great. Okay, but the challenge was uh, they, they figured, well, even if we get just 0.5, that would be 100 new customers, and that's what they needed just to break even. So they figured this is almost a guarantee. It's going to be great. How many responses did they actually get? Zero. $20,000. they Or 20,000. Mailers that they have printed out have paid for the printing, paid for the postage, and everything else, and they got zero response. Now, another thing we see a lot of times is that companies will just try to 
uh, go with somebody who might not be a really good specialist within marketing. It'll be a fan, friend of a family or somebody else that they might know, or even with a lot of banks. You know, it's surprising. I work with a lot of banks, and the person in, inside who's actually the one who's in charge of it is probably a teller that they got promoted up. So as a result, there's a lot of money that is wasted on sales and marketing efforts that just don't work. So throughout my 30 year career, you know, I've learned several important factors that actually drive profitable revenue growth. And today I'm gonna to share a few. And the best part is that when you actually learn to market effectively, you can actually generate more sales without actually, well, actually spending less on marketing. So what are three ways that you can actually generate more revenue? Any ideas? More customers, right? More customers, right. Get more people. Other things? Anybody else? Control Better costs. Market. Control costs. Good one, actually. Sell more, right? To more people. So like right. So here are some of the here's the top three ways that you can actually generate more revenue. Number one, you can sell to new customers. Obviously, if you're already making money from your current customers, sell more to new ones, you're gonna get more revenue. Another way, sell more to your current customers. You can value add. You know, current customers, they're a great source, they already believe in you, they're already buying your products, so you can actually get more that way. And third, you can raise prices. Now, you know, the best way to raise prices, not always popular, but you can raise prices by adding value. Again, so those are some of the key things that you can actually do to do that. So the nice thing is that the companies that are successful understand that generating revenue can actually happen in all three areas. So how would you like that? How would you like to be able to make, have that kind of impact within your company? But you can have the right revenue growth strategy, and it's everyone's responsibility. So whether you're sales and marketing, or whether you just work for a company, but especially if you're top management, it's actually your responsibility to be able to help and drive that. And one of the key responsibilities that you have, uh, if you're an executive within a company, is actually to um, give yourself a real competitive advantage. Find yourself a way to actually position yourself to win. So let's say I'm a car mechanic. So I'm, I'm a car mechanic, we all have cars. Okay, we all need a mechanic from time to time. Corey, I've seen your car, you probably need a mechanic more than that. <laughs> That's true, That's true. Okay, so let's say I'm a car mechanic. So I decided I'm gonna get into business because I'm, I'm just a really good mechanic. So I'm gonna start my own company. All of a sudden you go through the phone book, you realize there's 120 other mechanics out there. And you realize every one of those mechanics got into business because they were damn good mechanics also. So what's going to make well, somebody choose your agency compared to somebody else's? You know, and that's the biggest dilemma that people face. So the key is that you have to get yourself a jump. You got to jump yourself out of all the 120 that are sitting here. You got to find a way to actually distinguish yourself and jump into an area that actually nobody is in. So you got to jump out of the pool and position yourself to stand out for your competitors. You have to uneven the playing field. And that's the foundation of a great company. One that's actually built to generate revenue for the long term, not just pour money into marketing. So, but here's the catch. Building the foundation actually takes time and takes effort. But the nice part is that it's not, because it isn't easy, a lot of companies don't do it. In fact, 99.9% .9 of companies do not have a distinguishing competitive advantage. So as a result, they exist in this whole fishbowl of sameness. So again, what that means for you is an opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to easily stand out from the crowd. And the key is actually a strong foundation. So how many of you remember the story of the three little pigs? How do we all do? Okay, so now imagine this is your company. Okay, so your company and you're the first little pig and you've got to go out and you decide you're gonna build yourself a house. And this is your company, you're starting out because again, you're a really good mechanic. Oh, we well, have no distinguishing factors. Also, now your company, your competition comes along. They want your customers. It doesn't take much for them to hop and pop, offer a little special deal. They blow, and your company is gone. Now, maybe you feel you've had some really strong relationships. Now, you build a house, and you guys have built on sticks. Okay, you got some strong customer relationships. You've known a lot of people for a long time. So, again, you build your house. Competition comes along. They offer a better deal. And even though you have strong relationships, their deal is just enticing enough, or once again, they huff and puff, they blow, and your business is gone. And how many businesses fail within the first five years? Ron? At least 
80% fail within the first five years. Why? Because there's nothing that really distinguishes. They don't aren't built on a good foundation. So the foundation, now you've got a foundation made out of bricks. Now this is your competitive advantage. This is what really sets you apart. And the thing is, if you offer something that your competition doesn't offer, it doesn't matter how hard they huff and puff. Because you're doing something that nobody else is doing. That's real competitive advantage. So the moral of the story is to build a sturdy, sustainable foundation that consistently fends off attacks for competition, um, you really have to be able to do that. So now think to yourself. What's keeping the competition from eating you? What can you do to actually stand out and present yourself from failing? So what we're now what we're going to talk, talk today is how do you build that brick foundation? I want to be the helpers and helpers. Yeah, eating everybody else. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so again, at I think creative, yeah, you know, I work with a lot of companies as I kind of mentioned. And one we actually have strategies to help people in creating strong competitive advantage. And we work them on an innovation kind of standpoint, what's going to make them really stand out. So that process is far more involved. What I'm going to share with you today is just a few things that you can kind of do on your own to really take a look at what you're doing and how you can kind of gain some kind of steps initially. So one of the first things you need to do as a company, you have to ask yourself, why should somebody buy from you? Well, you know, when somebody's making a choice between you and the competition, what is it about your company that actually makes you step apart from that? And don't say quality and service. Quality and service is one of the biggest overused kind of terms ever. In fact, we have some clients that say, oh, they should buy from me because we have great quality and great service. Right now, today, everybody believes that quality and service should be a given. So there's nothing really that's going to stand it out. If you're selling on quality and service, you're basically one of that whole pool. You're sitting in that fishbowl because nothing's going to make you stand up. Again, if you don't have a clear, marketable, competitive advantage, then you're better off taking all the money that you were spending on that and instead investing in research and development. Developing new products, new re um, services, new payment options, that can actually help you out. So I'm going to talk about new products. Okay, let's take Apple. Okay, so Apple was competing directly against Microsoft or all their different systems. Now, granted, they were user-friendly, which is better, but they weren't making a lot of headroom. So Steve Jobs went out and he created iPod, and then iTunes, and now the iPhone. Okay, so they, instead of just competing directly ahead, decided to jump out, go into a different pool, and now they're competing in a market where they basically have 100% of it. Now other people are trying to catch up. So again, you can create new products and stuff on it. Uh, you can create new services. You know, LifeLock. Okay, so LifeLock was based on the fact that a lot of people didn't really have uh, ways to protect themselves against identity theft. The company saw a need and they created a service to actually help with that. Now imagine that we're the mechanic again. So what could we offer? Maybe there's a five day oil change. Well, five minute oil change. Yeah, I guess five, five days oil change. Yeah, five day oil change, that might be a little bit. That's a lot of straw, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So again, so, so much for that competitive. You're a five day oil change. Yeah. yeah. That's probably not good competitive. You don't want to advertise that too often. So, okay, so the five minute oil change. If you do a five minute oil change, would that be a competitive advantage for the 30 minute? Of course. Ron? Enterprise rental car will pick you up. There you go. So they're going out of there because you're going to come Yeah. A nice little touch that's actually become their slogan. And again, it's a service that they do that nobody else does. They're competing against Avis and everybody else. That's a great point. A really good point. Uh, maybe there's new payment options, stuff like that. So. But it all starts with really wanting to solve your customers' problems. And how many of you really know what your customers want? Okay. Actually, how many of you, uh, what do you think is the number one thing that customers want? More business. Customers want more business, right. Anything else? So here's a list of some of the things that customers actually say that they want. They want to reduce expenses, improve customer satisfaction, increase turns, and get their products off the shelf. They want to grow sales. They want to improve profitability. But the number one thing that your customers want to do is they want to delight their customers. I mean, when we get into business, we all do it because we're passionate about what we do. You remember the mechanic? He was a damn good mechanic. And he liked working on it because he liked to see happy customers. Now, if there's a way that you can find a way for them to actually delight their customers, well, then actually you've done a really good job. 
Again, that's the number one. So these are some of the key things that your customers want to have happen to them. So if you can create something that actually helps your customers, and you're the only one that offers that, and you offer it in a unique way, would that be a competitive advantage? Yes. Yes, yes it would. So and if suddenly a prospect hears that you have a solution, and again, the solution solves one of their biggest pain points, do you think they're going to call you? Yes, because you offer something nobody else can. And wouldn't it be great to actually have prospects calling you instead of you calling them? You know, that's the main thing, is having a stand up. So one technique that we use, again, in our sessions with clients when we're brainstorming is, you know, how do you develop a new service? How do you develop a new thing? Well, we call it the idea box. Now, this idea box, and a lot of you will see it on your sheets, the unique thing about the idea box is that it actually breaks everything down into a simplest form. So the way it kind of works, and you'll see it kind of on here, here, this happens to be a, an idea box for how to improve the design of a laundry hamper. So we're going to create a new product. So what are the basic parameters of a laundry hamper? Okay, well, they figure this material, shape, there's a finish, uh, and where it's positioned within a room. We kind of break those down. So I'll just go through this quickly. So material, wicker, plastic, paper, metal, net material. Uh, the shape, they're square, cylindrical, rectangle, hexagon, cube. You know, and then we have the finish. It's natural, painted, clear, luminous, neon. Uh, position where it sits on the floor, on the ceiling, on the wall, um, hangs on the door. Again, so we take all these different things. Now, just from this list, we create hundreds of different ideas just by circling different things. In this particular case, we circle net material, cylindrical, is painted, and it hangs on the door. So basically, almost like a, a basketball hoop where you can actually put your laundry. New product idea. Here's how another you, one. How would you apply that to a service? I'll get to that here. Here's another one. Okay, so here it happens to be a new business extension for car washes. So car washes, we figure out what are the methods, what are the products washed, what is the equipment, and what are the products sold. So they go through some of the different methods, you know, full service, self-service, hand wash, mobile combination. We go through the products washed, cars, trucks, houses, clothes, dogs. Again, they do the combination. Now we've got a self-service dog wash that basically, you know, is made of brushes, dryers, stalls, and sprays, and it sells related products. Once again, just kind of doing different combinations. So we had a question of what, what, how does it work for doing a service? Well, similar kind of thing. Here has to be a much more broad one, but this one is actually an idea box for marketing a book. Okay, now you can do the same thing for a service kind of thing, but here's an idea for a box. So we figure out what are the ways that you market? What are some of the key verticals in it? Uh, so we look at packaging, distribution, promotion, and selling. And then we list a lot of different ideas. Here's 10 different ideas here. Um, 10 over there, and then you start just doing all the different combinations to it. So again, you figure out what are the key things, the key parameters that you really need. Those are the things that go across the top. What are the things that it has to have? And then once you have those, you list different variations from it. Then it makes it really easy to start brainstorming ideas of how can we combine this? How can we do something different? Again, it's called the idea box. It's created by a guy named Michael Calco, a creative specialist. Again, it's a great tool, and we use it quite a bit. So again, if you were able to create a new product to service and solve your customers' problems in a way that was really a genuine competitive advantage, would you be able to generate more revenue? Would you be able to sell to new customers, sell more to your current customers, or raise prices? Yes. Again, that's the idea of having a competitive advantage and what you can really do with it. We did one with our team in January, and it was really helpful. We, I think that uh, we got a lot of great ideas from it, didn't we, Kevin? We, when yeah. we did it in January with the, our full office center staff. So what we did in January with them, um, that was actually something we called a, a customer experience seminar. And we'll touch on that in a little bit. But it was the idea of going through different sessions and figuring out what are some ways that we can actually figure out. We'll, we'll take one item. So again, we were talking about brainstorming at that point. So I'll go back to the idea box, which is that could work out too. And in general, this is kind of the method we went to. We figured out, so what are ways that we actually ex expose to our customers? So is it our offices? How, how does our lobby look? Our receptionist? Everything else? How we answer the phone? Um, then we look for, okay, so um, what are other things to it? Is it um, materials? What are the services that we offer? How can we improve that? So we list them all. Then we kind of brainstormed ideas. So we're talking about a lobby. How can we change the lobby? How can we make it a more sensory experience? Can we add music? Can we add candy? Again, that's the taste. Um, what can we do to make it have feel? Can we add uh, smell to it? We have incense burning, you know, those kind of things. That creates a sensory experience is what we really kind of want to go for. 
We'll touch on that again in a little bit, but that's the idea. You can use the same thing going through this way. So the next thing you want to do is actually um, establish credibility, confidence, and trust. Again, if you want to generate revenue, this is another great approach to do. So we already talked about establishing R&D, what you can invest in. Here's the other thing you can invest in. So let's say you hire a new salesperson, and the new salesperson is Sally. So Sally's young, she's just out of school, she's really excited to start a job. Well, you give her business cards and a brochure, and then you just tell her, go out and sell. And that's it. So let's say that Sally works with the mechanic. So Sally's going around, she's knocking doors, saying, hey, we're a mechanic, and uh, we'd like to have your business. And the guy goes, so what is it about you that should I should lead the mechanic I've been going to for the last five years and work with you? Well, we have great quality. We have great service. Not enough. So after a while, um, she's not selling with any competitive advantage. She has no real credibility. And of course, she's not established any kind of trust at this point. So basically within a few months, she fails. Okay, so most people believe that sales marketing is all about relationships. And while relationships are a really good thing to build your business on, they can't be the cornerstone of a revenue generation growth strategy. So companies have lost fortunes thinking that their customers would sustain them. Remember the little pigs with the stick house? Again, in 2008, those are a lot of the companies that failed. They had done business for 10 years and felt, hey, we got a really strong structure. But the reality is, Somebody else comes along, offers a better thing, especially in hard economic times, they're going to go with their competitor. So it's not a good situation for, a, again, strategy for a growth structure. It's too easy for competitors to entice them away. So what you really need, again, is a real competitive advantage. We talked about R&D. The other way is to position yourself as an expert. The reason is because experts attract business because they establish credibility, confidence, and trust. So before taking, let's say if I'm an executive, before taking your call, um, any decision maker, let's say I'm sitting behind the desk, I want to know who you are, what you do, and what's in it for me. So to win sales and establish expertise, if you operate from a position of credibility and power, I'm much more likely to believe you. And to do that it is, to, is called permission and education-based marketing. So basically what they do is people do business with people that they trust. And but trust has to be earned. So there's three ways to establish credibility and position yourself to create demand. And the first way is educate. So your prospective customers online, what are they learning from you? What are you offering them as far as information that's going to help them be better, help them achieve some of their customer goals, some of their pain points? How are you going to help them delight their customers? Are you putting out articles? Are you putting out information on that? How are you helping them become more profitable? Okay, so education marketing is one of the most effective lead generation strategies that you can have. So, and then, so what's your lead magnet on your website? So all of us have websites, take a look at what you think you do. So besides your contact us page, what are other ways that you're trying to capture leads? Well, one of the most effective is actually to use education-based marketing. You put information out there that they will want to click on. So they'll want to either pick up the phone and give you a call, or they'll want to download it and leave their information. So some of the information you can put down there is a list. So you actually turn your website into a lead generation engine by actually making it, adding educational material. So one of those things is going to list a number. So 10 ways to market to millennials. You know, 10 ways that millennials can actually use office services. Okay, now that's something that if you're into those businesses, that's what you'd want to do. If you're marketing to millennials, you want to find out some tips, again, you'll pick up the phone or you'll download that information. Now there's offer reports. So a uh, special report for virtual executives. Again, reports and stuff, another thing that people love. Uh, save time and money. So five ways to save time and money with automated processes. Find a mechanic. They were saying five ways to save time and money with car repair. Okay, everybody has that, people are looking for that, they'll download that information. How about ask a question? So how about, are you wasting money on social marketing? Are you wasting money attending seminars? 
So our, now that's the idea. Are you wasting all those kind of things? You ask those kind of questions. That's the thing that actually gets people motivated, and they'll figure that out. Or use how to. So how to double your sales? Or again, if you're the mechanic, how do you get your car to 300,000 miles? Okay, if you could find out, I can actually get 300,000 miles on my car. Would you want to learn that? Yes. Simple information. It's free to give. It doesn't cost the mechanic anything. It's his knowledge. He'll give a few tips, and then because of that, you trust him. That's the kind of information that really works. And then once you have it out there, then you share it on your website, you share it on your blog, you share it on social media so that they find it in the virtual world. Not everybody's going to find it on your website. So again, part of the challenge with uh, marketing is to, once you develop your creative story, your creative strategy, it's figuring out how are you going to get your message in front of them. You want them to stumble across you. So that's one of the keys. So another way that you can actually, again, develop credibility and trust is speak publicly. So again, you're perceived as an expert if you share information that is valuable to everybody else. So, and the most important thing as you're giving a presentation is that it's not about you, it's about them. And actually that's a really good analogy to look at any kind of selling. Um, again, you really wanna stop selling because um, selling is actually a self-centered activity. So what you can actually do, you can actually, and it actually prevents you from making more money. You can make more money by not selling and just connecting people and solving their problems than you can by actually going in and selling. So tell yourself, again, I'm committed to helping my customers in any way I can. It's not about me, it's about them and helping them achieve their goals. So imagine it from a customer stand, standpoint. So you're sitting there, you have a salesperson come in, and right away, you know, Sally comes in, she's trying to sell you her mechanic services. Again, nothing really special. She has no idea what you want, who you are, or anything else. Now the next person who comes in, he wants to know a little bit more about you. He wants to know, so what do you drive? How many miles do you currently have on? How many miles would you like to get out of it? If there was a way I could help, would that be a benefit to you? Now that helps. Again, you actually generate more of that and you have more interest. I heard somebody say one time, people would rather buy than be sold to. Right, exactly. So the statement here was that people would rather be, buy than be sold to. And that's correct. You want to put them in charge of that buying decision. So um, so again, that's the aspect. And, and Ron Wax, Ron Wax here is uh, in our audience. And Ron, Ron Wax is a great networking. He's actually a networking genius and actually spends time teaching other people how to network because he understands the value of connections. And if you don't know Ron Wax, you want to get to know Ron Wax. And the best part is, Ron Wax also want to get, get, wants to get to know you, because that's how Ron Wax works. So, but Ron told me a story, and I'm going to share it here if you don't mind. You can tell me no after I'm done. So, it works out Checks back. in the mail, okay. There you go. <laughs> so, Ron told me a story once. He goes, imagine now walking into the office of a CEO. And when you get there, you hand him over a magic wand. Now, in reality, it's just a chopstick. But in the idea and hands of that CEO, it's magical. So then you ask him, I want you to wave that magic wand. I want you to imagine the one thing that if you could solve right now that make the biggest impact to your company, what would it be? Of course, the CEO's reaction is, you're going to be able to do that for me. You're going to solve my problem. And of course, Ron's response is, absolutely. Because if Ron can't solve it himself, Ron knows people who can. But Ron knows people who know people who can. Everybody has an index finger, right? Right out of the phone. Yep. So Ron leverages all about connections. Now, what you're basically doing, now Ron might not have made any sale to that CEO. But will that, when that CEO gets his wish fulfilled, is he going to remember Ron? Next time he has a problem, who is he going to call? Ron calls him and says, you know, I've got something I need a favor from you. Is he going to pick up the phone and answer that? Yes. Again, that's the value of connections and that's how it works out. So again, this is, you know, that in itself can be a real competitive advantage. Being able to connect people and solve their problems. Again, it's not about you. It's about them. Same again when we're doing speeches. So where can you speak? Any professional organizations, networking groups, industry groups, I happen to be a member of a Rotary group. We have speakers come in every week. We always look for speakers. Kiwanis clubs, uh, chambers of conference, um, office centers. You look for those opportunities where you can actually establish yourself as an expert in your field because you're sharing information that is of value to people. 
So again, another way um, to do it then is to get into print. Again, I heard this quote a long time ago, and I think it's really relevant to everybody. Either write things worth reading or do things worth writing about. Again, then that can be an industry magazine, some monthly newsletter, you know, your local paper, or again, the people who write things worth reading, maybe it's a book. So again, appearing in print positions you as an expert. That's why one of the best marketing things to write a book, because now you're an author. Well, you must be an expert expert because you wrote a book about it. So, so besides doing that, one of the things you can actually do to get into print is hire PR, you know, public relations company. Now there's a company um, called Media Relations. So Media Relations is a company in the Twin Cities area, and they actually charge only when they actually get you into print. So there's no phantom kind of thing. You only have to pay when you actually get into print. Again, a great company. They work with ClearCause. Happens to be an office and a client, and do some great work for them. But another way you can do it, actually, all of us could actually do it. It's a Sorry, I'm skipping ahead here. Thing called Herald. There's a service online, it's free, and it's called Herald. Help a reporter out. So this is a really good thing. The website for it again is www.helpareporter.com. This is one of the best publicity generation tools that are out there. Uh, it's, it was actually created to help busy journalists who need sources for stories. You know, they have a deadline coming up, maybe there's something that just broke. Okay, so we're looking for people to actually respond. They want experts. They want people in their field who actually can know about it. So if you happen to be an expert in the field, of course, they want to get your opinion, so they have quotes and information for the stories. So how it works is the publications and TV networks and bloggers, they'll post a list of articles out there. And they pay a fee, actually, to be able on the service. However, you and I, but there's no fee. All we do is sign up, and then each day we get three different emails. And within those emails is a list of different requests that have come in from the journalists. For any of those that you're interested in, you click on it, you reply, tell them your background. If they're interested, then they'll connect with you and they'll get the quote. Again, it's a great service, free service, um, and it's, it's a good way to get in print. So another way, again, is bloggers. So you really want to connect to bloggers. Sometimes people have a hard time figuring out, where am I going to find them? Well, actually, if you set up Google Alerts for something you're in the industry for, so let's say I talk about lead generation marketing. So I set up a Google Alert, so any articles about that that come across, I, I get into my feed. Once I see them, I see what, what the bloggers are that are actually writing about it, then I can contact them and help they get in print. Again, once you have something published, uh, make copies of it available to prospects. Again, that's a great way of getting it out there. Remember, the goal is not to be known as the expert or the goal is to be known as the expert, people who might not have even ever met you. Uh, if you achieve that position in your prospects, the customer's mind, chances are you're going to have a significant competitive advantage, and that's really what we're kind of working for. Again, if you have that competitive advantage, we're able to get educate, and you're able to get into print, and you're able to speak to people, are you going to generate more revenue? Yes, because you're going to be able to sell to more new customers who might not have heard you before, to sell more to your current customers, so they'll again believe that you're an expert, you have more services, and you're able to raise prices by adding value because, again, your expertise adds value to it. Now, one of the things I kind of mentioned was uh, personality. Again, personality sells. Marketing is like cocaine. Okay, so marketing is like cocaine, it just intensifies your personality. So the problem is, so the problem is, what if you're an asshole? <laughs> okay, so just market it, you know, intensify that personality. But at least the one thing that's happening is that even if you're an asshole, at least now you're going to stand out. Instead of swimming in a fishbowl, you're not jumping, you're really standing up. Actually, the worst thing you can have is to have no personality at all. And that actually happened to uh, Eric Spike Shop. So mm -hmm. Eric Saltfold actually started his business when he was 13. He purchased 50 bikes for 350 bucks, and he started his shop called Air at the Bike Man. Now, in his 35 years of business, he spent a lot of money on advertising. I did a conference one time. I had a chance to talk to Eric, and I said, so of all the advertising you've ever done, what's been the most effective? And Eric said, 
I'm gonna answer that slightly different. He goes, I view absolutely every penny that I invested prior to coming up the Eric the Bike Man campaign to be a total waste of money. Because what was happening is he was intensifying a personality that had no, or a company that had no personality. So all his marketing was a sticking. It was kind of just a waste. Same thing happened with the land installation company created by Robert Stevens. So Robert was actually a student at the University of Minnesota. He was fixing computers for his friends and his classmates. And he decided to start his own company. So he and a buddy decided, well, let's change up the name of it a little bit. So they went to a bar and they came up with Geek Squad. Again, Geek Squad had tons of personality and resonated with a lot of people. Several years later, they were able to merge it with Best Buy and they had 30% of the market. So there's a lot of other companies that also have strong personalities. We talk about Apple, strong personality there. People know exactly what they stand for. Harley. Harley doesn't view themselves as being motorcycle manufacturers. What Harley's really doing is they're selling a lifestyle. If you buy a Harley compared to an Indian, there's a reason. Because you want to have that idea of driving down the road, you know, the leathers, that rough kind of image to it, the bugs in your teeth, that's a Harley <laughs> ride. That's everything to it. Tattoo on your shoulder. Yeah, the tattoo, right. Yeah. I love mama. No, I'm across mama yeah. with Harley. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we want our clients to tattoo our brand on their shoulder. Right. Yeah. There was actually a great campaign. Yeah, so we people love us so much they actually tattoo the name on the shoulder. Yeah. Right. That was a great uh, campaign based on it. Rob? And along the lines of Harley, you remember our friend Jeffrey Brown, who was part of that original Apple group. And you yep. cited Apple. Steve Jobs' vision was. Uh, we're not selling products it's about a user experience it's harley apple and so they were creating products that had the personality that you're talking about and it's about the user experience and the more you like the experience the more you want another experience because it's not just a box right it's what does the box do and how do you feel and that was really kind of it so ron i kind of share for the people in the other centers the idea that you know, when, when Steve Jobs at Apple kind of created this thing, his whole focus was on creating a great user experience. And you'll see that from the simplicity of, you know, the way the Macs came out compared to, you know, Microsoft. You know, again, I initially toyed, you know, again, I bought my first computer back in 1990. Uh, and prior to that, I was understanding like the, the DOS language, which again, I'm a creative guy, I'm a visual guy. It was just awful, awful, it was painful. Um, <laughs> But again, now suddenly you see Apple and it's all visual, it's all very user friendly. That sold me. And from then on, we've always had Apple. Again, it just created a great user experience. And then he's been able to do that with everything. And he was passionate about knocking it down to the very simplicity. You look at you know, the iPod when that came out, I mean, there's hardly any buttons to it, no whistles. It's just a simple little clip, a button, that's it. He wanted to make it as simple user experience as possible. The you know, other ones too, you know, Starbucks, you know, Nike. You know, they all have this brand personality to it. And that's really kind of key. So, you know, again, people like to do business with companies that they like. Um, and then the nice part about it is it creates an emotional connection. And that is really important because 80% of buying decision is based on emotion. Only 20% is logical. So again, the more we can develop an emotional client or connection with our clients, the better it's gonna be. Uh, so imagine, okay, so we'll talk just a little bit about creating um, great customer experiences. Okay, so you want to create that emotional connection. One of the great ways to do that besides personality is create great customer experiences. So how many of you have ever gone on a cruise? Okay, so for those who have gone on a cruise, what was your first reaction when you walked back into your bedroom after that first night and saw your towels wrapped up as an animal? I'm I mean, paying for that. Yeah, you're paying for that. <laughs> so actually, you're paying for that. But the fact that you know it could be an elephant, it could be whatever. It was just kind of like bunny rabbit. It was just like, oh, cool. Again, so just a nice little surprise, and that's what they did. Those those little surprises they didn't know. And then every night you get back to your room, you're like, well, what is the animal tonight? Again, those little surprises, nice little experience. Corey and I had a a, a video shoot where we actually had to travel out to Raleigh, North Carolina. We stayed in a hotel, and in the morning we had breakfast. But as we were walking out to our car in the morning, I noticed all along this right along the entry or exit door. For those who did have time for breakfast, there was a brown, brown bag lunch packed up. I mean, they had a muffin and banana and um, orange juice. I mean, so they actually anticipated that some people might not have breakfast and they create a little thing. Very simple to do. 
Another hotel, a woman had commented to uh, the staff that she really loved their alarm clocks because when you woke up, it played spa music. So she thought, I'd really love to get one for the home. So and then she went out, she uh, asked the state, could, could I, or see, where can I get these? Where did you guys buy them? Well, they did some research and found out that they're not sold anymore. So she just kind of chalked up to something that she wanted but would never have. Well, on her last night's thing at the hotel, she gets back to her room, and there on her bed, wrapped up, is an alarm clock. They have given it to her. So again, very simple thing to do, create a great user experience. So the next time that she needs a hotel, will she choose that chain? Chances are yes. Yeah. Again, it's all about creating that great uh, customer experience. Um, again, so one of the reasons why you really want to create a great customer experience is because it leads to more sales. Okay, we want to create our information and based on that, make it emotional. So if you can do, create an emotional customer experience, you're going to get three times more likely to get recommended. They're three times more likely to repurchase from you. They're far less likely to shop around. In fact, 44% say they rarely or never shop around. Again, because of the fact you have a great user experience. They're much less price sensitive. So 33% said it would need a discount of over 20% before they would defect. In other words, they're willing to pay the extra for a great experience because they'll know that. It's kind of the difference between a Target experience and Walmart. Target's still a discount store, but a little higher than Walmart, but people are willing to do that because they'd rather have the Target experience than a Walmart experience. You can charge a premium if you have a great customer experience and people won't leave. That's really the key difference. So, again, if you're able to give a brand a personality, improve the customer service and help them generate revenue, does that actually help you create that? One second. Thank you. You're throwing up my mojo, of course. Sorry. <laughs> You're out too much of the flow. There we go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you riveted to it then? <laughs> Do the next one you can. Okay. So again, if you can create those grand, grand exper um, experiences, again, set yourself apart with the personality and create a great user experience. You can generate more revenue. You'll be able to sell to new customers, sell more to your current customers, and be able to raise prices. So finally, one last thing we want to cover is the idea that revenue growth is not the goal. Profitable revenue growth is the goal. Scott, you're going to love that probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah it works. <laughs> so the idea, again, we want to create a profitable revenue growth as we go. So you know, a lot of times, um, we want to make sure that we have the customers that are actually good for you. Um, you know, a profitable customer is somebody who's actually willing to pay a premium if you give them a strong ROI, and they actually refer other profitable customers to you. Again, all of that is of great value. Um, yeah, so many firms kind of figure out, especially the ones that are starting out. I mean, a lot of us, you know, especially with a say if a virtual office, maybe we're one, two per person offices, those kind of things. So we have a small group. So we kind of feel initially we have to take everybody and everybody. But the downfalls of that, that some people you take just suck the life out of you. So you got to fire them. You got to fire them fast. Because what I found in my experience of working with all these different companies is the one that sucked the life out of you could kill your profits. They eat up your time, they eat up your money, and they don't do you any good. Because in the end, chances are they're not going to refer you anyway. Because they're just people that are just not going to be happy. They're just not good customers. So get rid of them, move on to somebody that actually is profitable. Um, so what you want to do really is kind of put a stake in the ground. We kind of talk about personality. One of the things they do with the personality is they just figured out this is who we are. So you want to know exactly who you are and what you offer. Um, and if you do that, then your ideal customers will actually find you. And if you do educational-based marketing, it makes it a lot easier to find you, especially if you can set yourself apart because you talk about exactly what it is that sets you apart. Again, if you don't stand for something, then basically you stand for nothing. So how can profitable customers find you and if they don't know what you stand for? Well, once you find those customers again, so once you want to stake that out, have them drive to you, and then once you actually have customers come to you, there's two powerful questions that you can ask. They can actually double your sales. So first of all, you have to give ownership to the buying process. We talked about that. People don't want to be sold to, they want to buy. Give them the information, let them make that buying process. 
So these two questions actually help you get to the buying things quicker. And here's the questions. First one. So let, let's say I'm sitting, I've gone through, uh, meeting with a client. We've gone through the discovery process. At this point, I kind of know what their problems are. I know what their goals are. I kind of know what they're trying to achieve. So I'll sit across and I'll say, so thanks, Charlie, for explaining all your different aspects and what you're really trying to achieve to complete me. Um, so completely. Um, so I, I, I believe, yeah, you complete me. Yeah, thanks, Charlie. <laughs> you complete me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have, we've made that most of the time. Charlie, you look complete, man. I really want to go forward with this. Uh, really Are you going to get a room? Yeah, really. Yeah, so yeah, Chuck and I. Um, so anyway, so he's explained the situation. I understand what their problems are, everything else. So again, so he goes, I believe in your, you understand the problem. But in your own words, how can I help you? So by asking this statement, in your own words, how can I help you, there's one of two responses that Charlie's going to have. Charlie's he's going to say, hell, I don't know how you can help me. You're the expert. You tell me. Which is great, because basically he's positioning you as the expert, and you're getting exactly as you want. Now, you're going to tell him how you'd solve his problem. That's exactly where you want to be. Now, his other response is, great question. Thanks for asking. Here's how I envision it working. Once again, he tells you exactly how you can help him. And then you outline it there, and then you just write your proposal based on all those kind of things. So again, a great question to ask. In your words, how can I help you? And then once you establish that, then the next step is simply, um, okay, great, now that I know I can help you, what do you see as the next steps? Or how do you want to move forward with this? Now you know exactly, you're basically outlining the next steps that he needs in order to make that decision, to make it move forward. Again, two powerful questions that actually, if you get them right, especially with the ideal customers you want to meet, these are things that can actually help you generate more revenue. So to summarize, again, if you really want to jumpstart your revenue growth, you want to create real competitive advantage. You know, create new products, new services, use the idea box. You know, come up with different ideas. What can you do to really going to step you, get you to jump out of that fishbowl into something else? What's going to set you apart? Again, if you're spending money on marketing and you don't have that, don't waste your money. Invest in R&D and get that. Another thing, establish credibility, confidence, and trust. Again, get yourself in print. Do some speaking. And for sure, do educational marketing. The idea of putting information out there that you think is going to be a value, that's actually positioning yourself as the expert, and then share it with people. That's going to be key. And the third thing is give your brand a personality with great customer experiences. Again, 80% of people make buying decisions based on emotion. So the more you can create that emotional connection, that's what's really going to sell, and that's going to do it. If you can do those things, then you're going to find you will have revenue growth. Because you will be selling to new customers. You will be selling more to your current customers. And you will be adding value so you can raise prices. And if you can do that, then over the next 12 months, you can double your sales and double your revenue. And that's really kind of the goal. So if you found value in what I was able to um, share with you today as far as how you can generate more revenue and how you can create yourself a competitive advantage, then you owe it yourself to contact Think Creative Contact me. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to you about some of your needs. Again, feel free to contact us. The information is on your sheet. Uh, I welcome any questions. Ooh, first of all, clap. Yay! Yay! I love when people clap for me. It works out really good. So, have you, um, have you too, it seems like you have the like, Blue Ocean strategy. You know what that book is? No. It's a lot. Okay. Never mind. I was just curious. It's, it's about competitive advantage. Yeah. Getting out of the Red Sea where all the bloody, you know, competition is and, and doing something where you're you're the market. Yeah. So it's not, anyway, so I thought. Well, then, you know, and part of the challenge, you know, I have a, like a client right now who I'm working, we just signed on, so we're working with the branding aspect to it. And their headline, the tagline that they've had for the last 20 years is, Excellent quality and service. And you're trying to get them away from using those words and how you're going to do that. So 
Now they've been around for a hundred years, they're family owned. So we're looking at what are some of those kind of aspects you can kind of graph on that because their competitors aren't family owned. They don't have that same kind of mis, um, standpoint. So we're looking at what is it that the current customers think is their advantage. And we work through those kind of processes to make sure. So that is part of the challenge is figuring that out. But competitive advantage, whatever you can do uh, again. Now, so let, let's say we're Sally. Now Sally goes out and she actually has something to sell. She has a five minute oil change to sell. Okay. Now she can get her foot in the door. She has something unique that the competitors can't offer. Because this other guy, he drops his car off his, his mechanic, and that mechanic is, you know, it's half hour, an hour every time. Well, who wants to have that time to wait? You can offer five minutes. Okay, you got me. Again, that's a competitive advantage. So now that's the, you know, the, the pig stand things. That's the brick foundation because nobody else can offer it. And that's what you want to look for. And every business is a little different. You know, again, where we're having a service kind of based business, it makes it a little more challenging, but <laughs> You kind of look at again what your competitors are doing. For instance, okay, so we're a marketing company, a lot of marketing companies out there. But through our years, we've been in business for over 14 years. Um, and we started offering video because none of our competitors are offering video. Then we started doing what we call cinemation sales videos. So instead of just straight up video, what our made ours so unique is the fact that we have live action mixed with animation. So we can actually tell a great story because we're mixing all the different graphics and everything else to be able to communicate that. So these cinemation sales videos went really well. Um, E-message videos. These are a totally unique product in the market in which we created videos mm -hmm. in which uh, you could actually have a message in the video. You type a message, you send it off to, let's say I send it off to Lori. Well, Lori gets it. She can change the message in the video and then she can send it out to back to me or to a hundred other people. Well, E-message video, really unique product. Now we're offering a service called pop videos. You might've heard it because we're working with office centers on it. So pop videos, solving a customer problem. How do you get out your message to social video as much as possible? How can you sell yourself socially? Well, these pop videos, basically they're shot cleanly on a white background. You basically book a session. So it's a half hour session. We have a teleprompter, you stand in front of it. You tell your little story. We take that and we can edit it down to say a two minute video or two one minutes or four 30 second videos. The nice part is the cost is the same. Whether you have one video or you have four, it all works out. And we take that then uh, and give it back to you. And that's, again, we're doing it at a, a great rate at only as low as $2.99. You can get that custom video created for you. Again, we're doing it as a service, as part of that competitive edge kind of thing. And one of the latest ones we just did for Lori, we call it a whiteboard video. Again, totally different style, voiceover, everything's kind of shows things being drawn onto a board. Nice little touch, really unique. You see it? That's the idea. So you see it. It's really cool. Yeah. So it's really something different. That's how you stay competitive. So that's what we're doing just within the video services that we offer. Now, of course, now we're getting more into, you know, again, this working with clients on the innovation. How do you set yourself up apart from this by creating products and gaining your own competitive advantage? So even as a marketing company, we keep on evolving. We keep on changing. Um, and that's what keeps us in business for over 14 years. Yes. I have a question regarding social media. So when you're building up a new business and you're brand new, do you suggest holding just one target like Twitter or do you suggest branching out as much as possible to get more exposure like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn? Yep. So the, the question is uh, um, about social video and should you focus just on one of the mediums or several of them? Um, when it comes to those, I would look at using as many as possible. And the reason I say that is because the, the biggest time consuming factor for you is creating content. So once you create the content, what do you create something that actually tells your story and sets you apart? Then how can you repurpose it? So maybe it's not the exact same thing that you share in Twitter that you share in Facebook, you know, um, but you can share some of those kind of things and Facebook will tweak to it. You can stick it on LinkedIn. You can put it on Twitter. You can put it on Instagram, you know, so the, the, once you create content, which is the biggest time consuming thing, Share it in as many ways as you can. Share it on blogs, share it on you know posts, those kind of things. That's the great way because that'll get you exposed to a much larger audience. That's a great, good question. Any questions from the other locations? Joe has answered. Oh, okay, through your great. Stupefied. Yeah. Spellbound. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All of you have an evaluation form. If you would help us out by telling us what you thought of uh, the presentation today, and I'm sure we all found it was really great and worthwhile. 
Um, if you would like to be a presenter, please let us know on the form what your topic would be. We're um, scheduling our uh, educational seminars into 2016 right now. So if you've got a, a, a great topic, let us know what it is. We'll help you with promotion. If you know of people who could you really use Kevin's information, it will be on the YouTube channel tomorrow. So all of any of our presenters do get um, a, a YouTube video that you can link to and any of our clients can go in and, and watch the session um, whenever they want to at your home desktop if that's what you want. So those are all great things. Um, just a couple of things. Next month, um, the Power Lunch will be on November 19th. It's going to be at the Park Office Center location. Anyone who's here, you'll be watching it on the screens. Um, it's going to be your online secret to success, building a solid web presence, and it's going to be done by Trigby with uh, BusyWeb is going to be in. So you know, with, for, with your uh, 2016 coming up, you want to make sure you have a great online presence. Um, Kevin, just thank you so much. We really yep. appreciate yep. it. Thanks for all you've done for Office Center. <laughs> And um, I want to make sure that I give you the first hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel so much better. You, you complete me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, don't eat it all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm driving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, we want to do a couple of things. On November 11th, we are going to be having a great big celebration. So mark your calendars. Um, it's going to be at the France location. One of the things that we are announcing, and we did, I, I think we announced in like last week, we are taking the space in between the two centers. So you know that anybody who's been at France, you've got the main center that has all of the full-time offices, and then we have the workspace. Well, we're going to give Connect a whole different meaning because we're connecting two spaces. We're taking everything in between. We have 14 new offices that we're marketing along with other things. And so come in and see what's going to happen. We're ripping out some of the, the where the, uh, in the co-working space, the wall, where the uh, copy areas and everything, we're making the co-working space bigger. We're going to have more conference rooms, so come and see a sneak preview. And this is all going to be completed by January 1. So we have work to do in this next couple of months. The other thing is, is that we're announcing on the 11th our one community project. We've done a lot with charities over the years, but now we're going to be looking at doing some new efforts. We're going to be calling it One Community. How can all of us help um, some of the charitable and nonprofit agencies in the in Minnesota? We have some that we're giving space to. We're going to be uh, launching a whole new aspect of our website where nonprofits can go in and request whether it's meeting space or workspace or any of the services that we offer or a website or marketing. And we're going to ask all of us to team together to help build some of those nonprofits and charities. And then um, on the 12th, the Clear Cause has an event, which is one of the nonprofits that we support now. That's the, um, the group that does um, safe students, students, safe students abroad, safe student travel. And they are having a night at the Timberwolves. We're working with them. They have 200 tickets if anyone wants to go. Um, there's a discounted rate, I think $20. So, you know, if anyone wants to go, there's going to be a great big group of us that are going to be going in that evening. Just ask support any of your managers or support any of that. So that's going to be happening on the 12th. We've got a lot of stuff happening this month, and I look forward to seeing you at the party. And on November 11th, we have a huge announcement. Huge, huge, huge. And I'm not kidding, huge. So make sure you come. I hope to see you all there. Wine, cheese, adult beverages, whatever we're going to have, it'll be good. So Yay. thanks for a great day. One more lesson, the top video. So next week, uh, Thursday, uh, right. next week, Thursday, there's networking at uh, Park Office Center. Um, following the network, we will have our pop video kind of <laughs> stuff set up and uh, be able to do those. So if you're ready, Anybody wants register to, online. Yes, at you can register online and you can get your videos done. They'll have the whole thing set up. You can go in and view it and make sure that you get some appointments because these are incredible values just for our community. Just for our community. So it's good.